In this lecture, let's learn what is view encapsulation in Angular. Now, if you have a prior knowledge of object-oriented programming, then you must be knowing that encapsulation simply means hiding data and behavior from the outside world. Right. Now, what do we mean by view encapsulation? Let's understand that. So, we have learned that whenever we create a component, for that component, we specify a selector, a view template, and then we use the style URLs property or styles property to specify some CSS style for that view template, right? So, we use style URLs property to use an external style sheet for our view template, and we use styles property to specify inline style for our view template. Now, whatever style, whatever CSS style we specify using the style URLs property or the styles property, that CSS style only gets applied to that particular view template, right? So, in this example, whatever CSS style we will specify inside this app component.css, that style will only get applied to the view template of this app component. And it will not get applied to the view template of any other component. And this is what view encapsulation is in Angular. So, view encapsulation is a concept or a behavior in Angular where component CSS styles are encapsulated into the component's view and they do not affect the rest of the application. For example, in this Angular application, we have three components. First, we have this app component. Then, we also have comp1 component and comp2 component. Now, each of these three components has a button element. So, if I open the app component.html file, here you will notice that this app component has this button element along with this h2 element and this paragraph element. In the same way, if I open the HTML file of this comp1 component, here also we have this button element along with this paragraph and h2 element. And in the same way, for this comp2 component also, we have a button element along with h2 element and paragraph element. Now, what I have done is, in the CSS file of this app component, I have added some CSS styles for the button element. Okay, now if I go to the web page, you will notice that that CSS style has only been applied to the button element of app component. But if you notice here, if I go to app component.html file, here, this component 1 and component 2 are the child components of this app component. And inside this component 1 and component 2 also we have button elements. But this CSS style which we have specified on this button element has only been applied to the button element of app component and not to the button element of component 1 or component 2. And this is what view encapsulation is in Angular. Usually when we specify a CSS style, the CSS styles has global scope. Okay, CSS rules applies to the entire document. You cannot apply rules to the part of the document. But in case of Angular apps, the components coexist with other components. And that's why it becomes very important to ensure that the CSS styles specified in one component does not override the CSS rules in another component. And to achieve this, we use view encapsulation. Now, how does Angular actually achieve this view encapsulation? In Angular, there are three types of view encapsulation. None, emulated, and shadow DOM. Now, by default, Angular uses emulated view encapsulation. Okay. Now, in this emulated type of view encapsulation, Angular adds some unique HTML attributes to the component CSS style and also to the HTML elements in order to achieve the view encapsulation. So, for each component, there will be a unique attribute which will be added to each HTML element in that component. Let's understand this with an example. So, when I run this Angular app, it will look something like this in the browser. Now, here we have the app component and inside this app component, we also have comp1 component and comp2 component. Now, let's inspect the page source of this Angular application. So, here I am in the elements tab. And if I expand this app root, first, here we have this app component. So, inside this div, we have one h2 element, one paragraph element, and one button element, just like we saw in the VS code. And if you notice, 
on each of these HTML elements, there is a unique attribute which has been used. Now, we didn't specify these attributes explicitly. This has been added automatically by the Angular to each of the HTML elements of this app component. Okay. And here, if you notice, the value of this attribute is same for each of these elements in the app component. Now, if I go to, let's say, comp1 component, here also you will notice that for each element of the comp1 component, another unique attribute has been added. Okay, so you can see on this div element, h2 element, paragraph element and button element, a unique attribute has been added. And this attribute value is different from the attribute value of the HTML elements of app component. In the same way, if I expand this comp2 component, here also on each of the HTML elements of this comp2 component, a unique attribute has been added. And this attribute is different from the attribute of comp1 component as well as app component. Now, when we specified some style for the button element in this app component.css file, we specified it on this button element, right? Now, let's go to that button element in the app component. So this is the button element. Let's select that. And here you will notice that that CSS style has been displayed. And if you notice, this CSS style has been applied on the button element, which has this attribute. Okay, so it has not been applied simply on the button element. It has been applied on the button element, which has this attribute. And this attribute is the unique attribute which we are seeing for the HTML elements of app component, right? And using this unique attribute, Angular achieves view encapsulation in emulated type. So currently, these styles are applied on the button element with this attribute. Now, if I change the value of this attribute from C13 to let's say C12. So here, if I change it to C12, this is the attribute which has been used on comp1 component. So if I scroll down. Okay, so this is the attribute C12 is used for comp2 components. Okay, so now if I press enter, you will notice that this style is now applied on this button element. As you can see here, in the same way, if I change this value to 11, so this value will become the attribute of comp1 element. Okay, so this comp1 has C11 at the end of it. So it is ng content hyphen oni hyphen C11. Here, ng content oni hyphen C11. So now when I press enter, this CSS style will be applied to the button element of comp1 component, as you can see. So this is the emulated behavior. And this is how Angular achieves view encapsulation using emulated type by adding a unique attribute on each element of a given component. Then we also have another type of view encapsulation, which is none. So let's go to this app component class. So in the component decorator, currently we are specifying the selector property template URL property and style URLs property. Now we can also specify the encapsulation property here. Okay. And to this encapsulation property, we can assign view encapsulation type. So for that, first we need to get this view encapsulation from this Angular co. So we are importing it. And on this, we can use none. So you can see there are three types emulated about which we just now talked about. Then we have none and then shadow dom. Now, when we use none, in that case, no view encapsulation will be used. That means here we are using this, uh, you know, view encapsulation type as none. That means whatever CSS style we have specified for this button element, that will be applied to all the button elements of the child component as well. So inside this app component.html file, we have two child components, comp1 component and comp2 component. So now this CSS style will be applied to the button element of these child components as well. And this time, no unique attributes will be used. Let's see that. Let's go to the web page. Let's refresh the page. And now you will notice that that CSS style has been applied on all the button elements. And if you notice, now that unique attribute has been removed from each of these 
HTML elements. So there is no unique attribute for app component. And it has also been removed from here, from the CSS style. So now these styles are applied on all the button elements. Okay, so this is view encapsulation of type none. Now let's talk about shadow DOM type. So let's go to VS Code. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this CSS style for this button element from here. Okay, and I'm going to add it in the style.css file. So when we add a CSS style in the style.css file, that CSS style gets applied globally. That means it gets applied to all the components and all the HTML elements. So if I save the changes here, let's also go to app component.ts file. And from here, let's remove or I will comment this line. I'll keep it for your reference. Okay, so here we are not specifying any view encapsulation type. So by default, emulated will be used. Now, if I save the changes, if I go to the web page, you can see that that CSS style for the button element has been applied on all the button elements because this time we have moved that CSS style to style.css file. And when we write any CSS style in the style.css file, that gets applied globally. Now, let's go to maybe comp2 component. And here, let's open comp2 component class. And inside this component decorator, let's specify the encapsulation property. Okay. And here, let's set the view encapsulation to shadow DOM. And now let's see what happens. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And here you will notice that that CSS style for that button element has been applied on the app component as well as comp1 component, but not on the comp2 component. That's because when we use shadow DOM view encapsulation for a component, in that case, that component creates its own DOM. Okay. The browser keeps the shadow DOM separate from the main DOM and the rendering of the shadow DOM and the main DOM happens separately. Okay. And that's why the feature state and style of the shadow DOM stay private and it does not, it does not get affected by the main DOM. And in this way, we achieve true encapsulation using shadow DOM. All right. So remember that when we use shadow DOM view encapsulation, in that case, the component on which we have used shadow DOM view encapsulation creates its own DOM and it is separate from the main DOM. All right. So this is all from this lecture and this is all about view encapsulation in Angular. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.